Well, we're about halfway through Lent, Lent 2022. And I think the readings today are there for a real purpose, to remind us, time to make an assessment of how we're doing on this year's Lenten journey. So we hear about in the first reading, Moses being selected for this important mission to the Israelites. And then we have Jesus speaking in no uncertain terms about how we need to reform our lives or bad things will happen. So it's time to reflect and, and think and, uh, and take some action about the whole fundamental idea that we're here for a purpose. We're here for a mission. And our mission changes. You probably, you've experienced it as you've grown older. At some point in our lives, some of us, are, our mission is to be the best possible parents that we can be. And maybe our mission then becomes, how do we bring the Word of God into a workplace? Maybe it becomes, how do we live out being reconciler of other people? How do we live our lives in accordance with the Word of God? And the basic idea is that we're here not for ourselves. We're here to use our gifts for the service of others. And if we're going to do that in a credible way and in an effective way, we have to always be reforming our lives. So this first reading from Exodus is perhaps one of the best known readings in the Old Testament, Moses and the burning bush. But before we get to Moses and the burning bush, it's maybe a good idea to recall a little bit about who Moses was. Remember, he had been brought up in the Pharaoh's court in Egypt after being abandoned by his mother, because at that time the Pharaoh was killing all the male children. So to save his life, his mother put little Moses into a little tiny boat. And who found him but the Pharaoh's daughter? So he was brought up in the court of the Pharaoh, became an influential, powerful member of Pharaoh's court. But he never forgot his roots. And at one point when he was a grown man, he came across one of the Egyptian soldiers abusing one of the Israelites. And Moses killed that soldier. Now he tried to cover it up, but people saw him do it. And so he had to leave Egypt. And so he winds up in Jethro's house, marries one of Jethro's daughters, and has a job which is quite a come down from where he was before. He's now tending the flocks of Jethro. And that's where our reading starts today, when he encounters something, someone, in the burning bush. And so he asks this very natural question you and I would ask too, for something as mysterious and awe-inspiring. Who are you? Who's speaking to me? And so God answers, but he doesn't really answer the question. Because God can't be named. If God could be named, he'd be another creature. He'd be somebody, something else created to which we assign a name. But God is not a creature. God is beingness itself. He is not another created being. He is uncreated. He is the ground of all being. And so God answers, I am who am. That's all you're going to get from me, Moses. 
in terms of a name. But tell them that I'm the God of your ancestors, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as Moses hears this mission that God has outlined, because God is very displeased with how the Egyptians are treating the Israelites, Moses must be thinking, what? You want me to go back to Egypt where I have a price on my head? But when I am, send you on a mission, you don't fail that mission. And Moses didn't fail. And then in the gospel, Jesus is reminded by some people that are with him about these, it must have been a horrific atrocity where some of the Roman soldiers under Pilate murdered a group of Jews who were at worship. But it seems that they were trying to trap Jesus into saying something about the Roman occupation that might get Jesus into trouble. But Jesus very deftly avoids the trap and turns it into a question for those people that are surrounding him. Unless you reform your lives, and he's looking at all those people around him, you're going to wind up like those unfortunate Jews did. And then he kind of goes one up on them and tells them the story about the tower at Siloam to drive the point home. You don't know how long you have. There's an urgency here. It's time to reform your lives. It's time to change your hearts because you literally don't know from one moment to the next if you're going to still be here. So don't put it off. And I think that's the message for us today. And then he comes to this story about the fig tree. Who or what is the fig tree? Well, commentators differ about it, but to me it makes the most sense if the fig tree is us. You know, we've been sent for this mission. We're, we've been sent to produce fruit in our lives, the fruit of being merciful and kind to others, doing some good here, not just being about our own selfish concerns. And where's the fruit? How are we doing with that? But the gardener, I think, has given us a little time, too. A little time to reflect and hopefully to change our lives, to become more like the saints that God intends us to be. Unfortunately, we, I think, and I'm, I'm right here with you, I, we think we have all the time in the world. Tomorrow is soon enough to make these changes. And I'm pretty tired. Maybe I could just go to sleep. But I think the opportunity here is here to spend some time with the Lord in the rest of Lent. Ask him what his plans are for us. Ask him how we're doing. What do we truly need to change? You know, I think the, the alms and the um, prayer and the fasting are wonderful spiritual exercises. But really, that's not the point of Lent. Those spiritual exercises are a means to an end. And the end is to change, to really make some changes, to do what needs to be done. And so we can ask God, you know, what's, what's really important, Lord? Help me tell the difference. Am I spending too much time on stuff that's not that important? Help me to have the courage and the willpower to make the changes that I need to make. It's pretty amazing that we can spend time with this awesome creator, this I am who am, the maker of everything that is, everything that will be. And yet, I am is humble enough to be interested in you and me, in every one of us personally, deeply, 
to love us to our core. And he is giving us some time. But who knows how much time? So perhaps you can pray with me that, that we can use the rest of this Lent 2022 to truly make some changes, to reform our lives in the way they need to be reformed, to change what needs to be changed. Knowing as you do this that I am as in front of us and behind us and above us and beneath us, but most of all, alongside us every step of the way. Amen. <laughs>